Drake, this is Front Up on Geno TV and Channel 99. Back again with us today is Ann Kutzba, the director of Housing Nantucket. Welcome, Ann. It's good Thanks, to have Dan. you here. Yeah, absolutely. You, you said you had a story you wanted to tell me. Yeah, I do. My uh, Someone from my mother's past was Googling my name to try to find my mother, and she found our show that we did a couple of years ago, and she was able to connect with my mom, who was her high school friend, by looking at us on the air and saying, wow, that looks just like Elizabeth, her friend. I hope and she'd listen to the whole thing. She <laughs> did. She was very intrigued by what's going on in affordable housing. Good. So what is going on at Housing Nantucket? We'll get into afford the bigger affordable housing picture in a minute, but what's happening at Housing Nantucket? Well, we have a lot going on, and we always do, because the demand mm -hmm. here is so strong, mm -hmm. and every year it just gets stronger as the real estate market just keeps getting stronger. Right. So um, first, what we do, we're an affordable housing nonprofit. We're independent of the town, but we mm -hmm. work in partnership with them. Mm -hmm. And we're a 501c3. Our mission is to create affordable housing for island residents. And what's new with us this year, we put on four new rental units of affordable housing mm -hmm. um, in two locations, and we have two more that are going to be coming online very soon. So we're thrilled about that. What size are they? How many bedrooms? They're two bedrooms. So it's actually three two bedroom mm -hmm. units and one one bedroom unit, mm -hmm. and the other two that are coming online are a two bedroom and a one bedroom. And the people who can rent them have to meet mm -hmm. certain income tests and so forth? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, everybody who is in the unit is between 60 and 80 percent of the area median income. Mm -hmm. So they have jobs like uh, teachers, there's a couple shop owners, and some uh, tradesmen. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, have you acquired any new houses recently? Are these new that you've just taken on, or are they ones that you, I know you had one that was sort of sitting there for a while out, right. out on Old South Road. Right? Yes, that's the one that we completed. And mm. we were really thrilled because we were able to create a third unit in mm. that, that unit where before it was a duplex mm. unit. So it took us a little longer, mm. but now we have three units in perpetuity for the community. That's great. Yeah. Um, the other exciting news for us is we got uh, certified to issue tax credits from the state of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So all donations over $1,000 to Housing Nantucket uh, will receive a 50% tax credit from the state of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So if you or a foundation or a corporation was to give us, say, $1,000, then you'd be getting the $1,000 right off on your federal tax returns mm -hmm. as well as a $500 <coughs> tax credit from the state. That's, so wow, that's pretty yeah, big. It's huge. It's a big deal. And that's been able, it's very helpful for us to raise $300,000 mm -hmm. last year. And now again, we're going to raise that other 300. So for what? For, for what? rental housing. Another, another building? Another, yes. Okay. Yeah, we have to be very specific about how we use the funds mm -hmm. and it's to create and maintain our rental housing mm -hmm. units. How many units do you have all together now? We have 33 affordable mm -hmm. rentals mm -hmm. and we have 70 covenant homes. So uh, in the past, say, I guess it's been two years since I've mm -hmm. been on your show, yeah. and we've created 14 new covenant homes, mm -hmm. and I believe this is now these four, and then the other two will be six new rental units mm -hmm. in that time. That's great. That's good. Yes. So let's look at the bigger picture. Yes. Um, and what was it, 2015, there mm -hmm. was an update to the housing needs right. study. And what did that tell us? What did the yeah. update tell us? I mean, it was huge because uh, the Community Foundation could see mm -hmm. that there actually needed to be some firm data mm -hmm. behind all the anecdotal evidence that mm -hmm. the housing crisis was getting stronger and you know it was harder for everybody. So when we got that document, it spurred a lot of conversation around it, and um, it pushed some actions to happen as well. Yeah, I, mean, I think you were on just after it had come out and okay. we talked about sort of what might happen, but mm -hmm. what has happened? What has happened? Well, we have a housing production plan mm -hmm. now, which is a requirement of the state if we're going to be in any sort of position to fight a unfriendly 40B development that comes in. Mm -hmm. So that's a very big deal. Um, all of the town, different organizations got together, the town municipality, mm -hmm. and adopted this. So that was um, a, a big undertaking, and we did it. Mm -hmm. So that was great. Uh, we also have um, an affordable housing trust fund right now, mm -hmm. which is fully functional. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, we had spotty meetings, and it was half filled, half empty. So how, how does that work? 
how does the Affordable Housing Trust Fund? Yeah. That is an arm of the government mm -hmm. appointed by selectmen. So there are seven board members. And now we're actually putting some funding in there. And the funding's being used for things like closing cost assistance and down payment assistance. Um, they're trying to kind of decide what else they want to do with it. And, you know, there's the six fairgrounds proposal mm -hmm. that's gaining some speed. So now an RFP was put out by the town mm -hmm. and a developer was selected. It's Hall Keen, mm -hmm. who uh, manages the Academy Hill right. apartments. So they'll be developing mm -hmm. 64 units at six fairgrounds mm -hmm. road. And I believe the Affordable Housing Trust Fund might be helping out as far as like infrastructure or something like that. That's where, been talked where, about. Where does the funding come from for the Affordable Housing Trust Fund? Well, we designated they would get some from town meeting. So that was one portion. Mm -hmm. They also applied to the CPC, so the Community, Community Preservation, Preservation Committee. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, they've been awarded some funding mm -hmm. through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about the housing bank? Has that mm -hmm. gotten any traction? Sure. Uh, so we passed it two years ago and then came back for a recertification mm -hmm. at town meeting this mm -hmm. year. That's up at the State House. It's sponsored by Dylan Fernandez and it's going through the House Who's of Representatives. State Representative. Yes, you know? our local rep. And he's been great, mm -hmm. really supportive. He comes out here all the time, always engaged with what's going on with affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And Julian Sear, Senator Julian Sear, our other local mm -hmm. rep, and they're really shepherding it through up on Capitol Hill. Uh, and it is moving through. Beacon, Beacon Hill. Beacon Hill, sorry. <laughs> Be cool if it was at Capitol Hill. But, um, yes. So they're up there at Beacon Hill, they're um, moving it along, mm. and it's still in the, the House of Reps, mm. getting debated and whatnot, but it is moving through committee after committee, and then it will go to the Senate mm. and get passed through there, but I understand that's a smoother transition. Mm. But so far, we're so good. Good. Um, so what did that 2015 study tell us? Yeah. Well, it told us that there was a dire need for affordable housing at every level no, workforce housing workforce housing which is a term that needs some definition mm. sometimes and essentially what it means is people who are working in the community it could be someone working at stop and shop mm. earning 15 dollars an hour all the way to a fire cap you know a mm. fireman who's working making or an employee of somebody like nir exactly yeah. yep so the range of, of, of uh, salary levels would be up to, say, $200,000 down to, say, $30,000 mm -hmm. for a single person. Mm -hmm. So it's really anybody employed in Nantucket County mm -hmm. workforce. So that's where we, we kind of took a stepping stone there. And what mm -hmm. the uh, report told us was that it laid out a 10-year strategic plan to create 240 units over the course of those 10 years at different home ownership and rental and you know this area median income levels uh, so that we could mm -hmm. adequately address the needs. And what kind of progress are we making on that? We're making some progress. A couple years later. Yeah we are and uh, specifically what Housing Nantucket's doing with our rentals and the covenant home ownership mm -hmm. that's good. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, development in the planning phase. So there's the Richmond Company development, which is, I want to say, 225 apartments, various levels. They actually have 25% uh, of those apartments must be for people who are earning below 80% of the AMI. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the rest of them are market rate, mm -hmm. which is undefined, really, whatever the market whatever. will bear. Yeah, exactly. So that could be $3,000, mm -hmm. you know, who knows, for a two-bedroom. Mm -hmm. I, nobody really is going to know what people are going to pay until the units are actually built. Mm -hmm. But they're in the planning phase right now, which is a big deal because that well, also... Aren't they building some already out of there on Old South Road? Um, well, I know they're doing the retail, right? But I thought back in behind. They, they do have some, but those are not the 225 okay. that we had to change the zoning and do all right, of that. Right. They're still working with the planning board to try to figure out what their subdivision mm -hmm. plots are going to mm -hmm. look like. Mm -hmm. Um, but that helps us, and the reason why we voted for that mm -hmm. was that it was going to help us gain on our subsidized housing inventory list and meet the goals that are set out by the state. And if we're to be compliant mm -hmm. with the laws, mm -hmm. then we need to have 10% of our total housing stock needs to be affordable. And that Richmond Company development, one of the benefits of that was that it brought us much closer. It doesn't bring mm. us to the 10%, but it brings us after that's built and the six fairgrounds property is built, it'll bring us to about 7.5%. So 
that's a big deal because right now we're at 2.5%. Mm. So within a couple of years, yes. it should be close to that 7.5%. Yes. Say three to five mm. years, we would be closer. And that's good for us because it gives us more control as far as responding to development proposals mm -hmm. rather than having to react. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it brings up a lot of emotions within mm -hmm. the community and it's just not a good place for us to be mm -hmm. if we can't tell the state that we're doing it ourselves because they'll make us do it. Right. Um, so what impact will Six Fairgrounds and, and the uh, past and development have on our housing needs? Is yeah. it gonna have a, I mean, obviously it'll help. Yes. But is it going to make a significant difference? Yeah, I think it will, I really do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it will make a, it'll change the landscape mm -hmm. for sure. So how much of a difference? It's really hard to gauge what's going to happen in the mm -hmm. future, obviously, and then you don't know where the market's gonna go and all that, mm -hmm. but I think that it's certainly going to help us to reassess what our goals are. Right now, what Housing Nantucket is really focused on is um, the covenant home ownership. We applied for mm -hmm. a grant from the hospital which I hope will uh, be approved, mm -hmm. but we're trying to buy down open market units so that they're affordable mm -hmm. for a covenant homeowner to purchase with an affordable deed mm -hmm. restriction on it. Mm -hmm. So it's basically retaining a community investment in the housing stock that's out there as open market. Mm -hmm. Because what we see here is uh, a lot of seasonal homeowners are purchasing year round housing stock and it's being taken away from the middle class or really the year force. round the workforce. Yep, the workforce and it's not available so mm -hmm. uh, year rounders are moving away now there's a, another force at work at the sort of the other end and that's uh, something like Airbnb right because that also has an impact as I understand it it sure does yeah I mean it's hard to <laughs> say no when someone wants to pay you $800 a night for your two-bedroom house. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard to make that work when you've got the year-round household that, and the family that might want to rent that year-round. But for 800 a month. <laughs> yes. Right. So I, I get it why people do that, but it, Airbnb does not help the housing mm. crisis. At and, all. and particularly in the summer with the summer work population. That's right. Which has to find places to live as well. Yeah. And our housing inventory is expanding, which means that the needs of the homeowners are expanding. And if we're not taking care of our workforce, it just kind of cripples us. Mm -hmm. And we're setting ourselves up to more social problems and also you know, more commuters and transients coming mm -hmm. from the, on the boat. And we're really leaving public safety at risk as well because these people who are essential personnel, doctors and um, nurses and teachers and fire, firefighters. Fire, fire, yeah. We remember that fire that mm -hmm. happened when all the firefighters were coming from off island. Mm -hmm. And you know it really leaves us at risk and it's unsettling. So mm -hmm. we really need to take care of people who are actually working here. Um, so if you were to look at your crystal ball from about five years from now, where do you think we'll be? Where do you hope we'll be? Yeah. I should put it that way. I hope that we are buying open market units and putting deed restrictions on mm. them so that they're retained for future generations as well as present generations for affordable housing mm. and at different levels too. You know, you can go up to like those people who are earning $200,000 a year. There should be something for them because mm. today they can't afford a $2 million house, mm -hmm. which is the average home price right now. Right. Um, so where will the money come from yeah. to do that? Well, it could come from the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, mm -hmm. who, if this housing bank bill passes, will be getting the uh, real estate transfer fee on t which all is, transactions. One, that's percent, projected it's, to be 1%, right? It's half percent. Half percent. Yep. Half a percent on sales over $2 million mm -hmm. on the amount over $2 million. So it's projected to earn about $1.5 million per year. And then we might leverage that mm -hmm. so that we could start buying this open market stock. That's mm -hmm. what I would like to see happen. Of course, none of this uh, takes into consideration the possibility of a recession. That's right. Which cuts both ways because it cuts the demand for housing along with the prices of housing. Yeah. So 
does it solve anything? I don't know that we know yet. If there was a recession, I am of the belief that those at the very top really aren't going to be affected mm, right. as greatly. So mm. then you're going to be, there's still going to be transactions mm -hmm. at that level mm -hmm. that will be able to put some funding in there. Mm -hmm. And if there's a recession, then hopefully there'll be more availability. People will, less people would be buying second homes and we might be able to start snatching some mm -hmm. stuff up for Nantucket residents. Um, I, I've noticed a trend recently. It seems to me more people are, there's some local people who do it, but there are more people coming in and, and buying houses and fixing them up and flipping them too mm -hmm. uh, at a considerably higher price than they paid for them. Yeah. And that, of course, puts pressure sure does. On, the, on the market as well, both in terms of, of absolute prices and in terms of loss of, of some housing stock. Right, and they're doing it because they can, and that's yeah. what the market will bear. Right. Um, so are you happy what you're doing? Well, I'll tell you, I am happy. Last mm -hmm. night I taught the first time home buyer ed class, mm -hmm. which we put on twice a year. Uh, it's free of charge for Nantucket residents. That's very gratifying to me. To How many people were there? There were about 30 people. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. We've had up to 90, mm -hmm. which is insane, right. but um, it's still a lot of fun. And then the best part of that is seeing people at Stop and mm -hmm. Shop and they tell me how the class really mm -hmm. helped them and now they own a home and it really was, you know, when you're buying a home for the first time, it's very confusing just mm -hmm. knowing what goes where. And so we lay it all out. We have uh, professionals from real estate, lawyers, appraisers, right. um, inspectors come in, talk about what they do. Mm -hmm. So the students really get a good education. So it's fun. Um, back to the housing stock for a minute. Sachem's Path, which yes. is that place over on Surfside Road, that's full, right? That's fully, pretty much built out and, and occupied? Well, yes and no. So there's two phases, mm -hmm. total 40 units. Phase one, uh, I want to say that was 18. And then now phase two, the lottery's already happened. Mm -hmm. The winners have been, you know, the people who can buy one of those right. homes have been chosen, but the construction is still underway. So those homeowners will be moving in, in uh, I'd say February, mm -hmm. sometime around there. They stagger them. Great time to move. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but that also, in a sense, takes a little bit of pressure off for a little short time. It does. Until the people coming behind them want the same thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. like at Housing Nantucket, for example, we have our rental units mm -hmm. and a couple of our tenants have won the opportunity to buy in Sachem's Path. Mm -hmm. So it's opening up an affordable rental right. for the next family. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, I mean, usually when people move in, they don't move out. Mm -hmm. So even though we have 33 rentals, we don't have a lot of availability. Mm -hmm. um, this is a you know this is a bit off topic, but just as a landlord, mm -hmm. is that a easy thing or a difficult thing under these circumstances? It's it's hard. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, it really is. And um, there's a lot of mental health issues on mm -hmm. the island and substance abuse. Mm -hmm. And when those when you have to deal with that as a landlord, um, that can be difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, what's really hard is saying no to the people who come in who need housing mm -hmm. desperately, you know, with their right. children in tow. Right. And um, that's yeah. really, really difficult. There's just nothing there. There's nothing there. And they think, you know, because they're a great citizen that they should be able to get the housing. And, you know, it's not like I can pull some strings and, and you can get a unit. I want to help, but mm -hmm. there just isn't the housing stock available right. for them. Well, I think you're doing a great job, Anne. And, and, uh, Housing Nantucket. That's right. <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Great to see you. And, you too. Uh,